Thank you so much for the opportunity to come on the call. I have to admit, I am slightly nervous with a massive number of amazing people on the call, um, but possibly something that people have not yet seen, which is why I thought it would be great to talk about it. So this is me. This is a really good picture of me. You won't probably see good pictures of me. Um, I took a really good photographer like that, and I do a lot for badges and, and a variety of stuff uh, in the community, and that's all my social. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please do feel free to reach out about this. But what I want to talk about is capacity. Now, capacity is really important because it's where we store all our data. Dataverse for Teams has a maximum amount of two gigabytes. Full Dataverse has a lot more. In fact, I've seen Dataverse instances of more than a terabyte. Now, as an architect, which is one of the hats that I play at times, when we come to projects and we implement uh, projects, we take a look at licensing. I pulled this out of the licensing guide earlier today. If anybody hasn't ever seen the licensing guide and has problems sleeping sometimes, just go and read it. Hundreds of pages. It's great. I guarantee you, you will not learn a thing from it, but you will be fast asleep. But here, and I've outlined it in red because I try to get the whole power stuff in, in one slide. Licenses come with capacity. Now, it depends on the license you've got. If we talk about full Dataverse, we have file capacity, which attachments are stored in. We have database capacity where our records are, and we have log capacity for audit capabilities. Dataverse for Teams does not have the uh, audit uh, capabilities uh, within it. But when we approach projects, we say, right, what are we building? What are we doing? How much data are we going to import and migrate if it's an existing solution that's being held elsewhere? And we make sure that we've got capacity in place. There are also capacity licensing, list price $40 per gigabyte per month. But it doesn't just stop at Power Platform. This is what the Dynamics 365 licensing guide, Power Platform 1 wasn't bad enough, uh, looks like. You get to look at this matrix and you go, you've got a combination of sales and service and God knows what. And I mean, it, it, it's premium licensing. Uh, it comes with a lot more capacity as part of it, which is nice. But uh, you still need to go and take a look at it. But that's when you start off, right? How much data are you migrating in? Work on it. What is your day one going to look like? I'm sure people can start thinking of the problems with this. So day one, you should know what the data is if you're migrating in. If you've got no data in there, great. You have no data. You have no attachments. You have no audit history. That's there. So the answer to how much data do you currently have is nothing. If you're migrating data in, generally, you have some sort of idea of how much data you're actually bringing in. 5 gigabytes, 50 gigabytes, 500 gigabytes, plus attachments. Although attachments, ideally, of course, you should, should not store in Dataverse. You should store in SharePoint much better place for them itself but businesses will say what am i currently going to do how much how where can i see what the amount of data i'm currently holding now i'm not going to flip in and out of the demo i'm going to do the whole demo at once so i'm going to just go through these different questions the second one is what's gone over time what was my data last month what was my data three months ago how much additional stuff is coming in who's been idiot enough to dump 50 million rows in because i didn't know where they came from Hmm, that's more challenging to do. And then they turn around and go, right, we're coming up for our budget approvals. How much data am I projected to have in six months or a year time so I can get budget approval to get the licensing that's there? Now, if you're not on the top of this, you need to keep going out because generally, if you don't keep your data pruned and tidy and you get rid of all data, or you archive it somewhere else, it just continues to sit there and grow. I was working with a government client a while ago. I'm going to be very careful that I don't give any indication as to who they are. Um, they had purchased one and a half terabytes of additional Dataverse storage, albeit at EA pricing. So they were not paying $40 a month. But a Microsoft sales rep was very happy because every month they went, we need another 70 gigabytes of storage because we have a massive more data that we didn't plan for. And but it throws budgeting out the window. It gets people very, very annoyed. You also can't do things like create new environments or spin up test environments or all the rest of these sorts of things. This presents challenges and a problem. So enough of the slides. Let's get on to demonstration. And the first place I'd like to start is in the PPAC, Power, Platmin, Power Platform. Platmin, I just made that up. I might use that. Power Platform Admin Center. Well, you have on the side here, you have this wonderful thing called resources. You've got capacity. It shows you your environments. Now, 
it's saying I'm using zero amount of dataverse across all my environments. I'm using zero of my file. I'm using zero of my log. OK, I happen to know I have environments with data in there. And if I go to Dataverse, <coughs> I don't have any Dataverse for Teams environments, so I didn't spin it out for this, but um, we can actually see over here again, it's saying zero usage, zero usage. I've got something in my default, but it's under three gigabytes, but I'm not too worried about default. But then if I actually take a look at the details of the environment, which I've imaginatively called EY Kalman's environment, it then says, hold on a moment, you've, you've actually got stuff in there. So what this shows, and this is invariant because you've got Power Platform admins and clients who are going, oh, we've got Power Platform Admin Center, we can go take a look at it. And then I say, yeah, but your data might not be quite correct. This actually refreshes on an async basis once every 24 hours. So if you migrate two terabytes of data, no, it does not immediately show up. And you have tables which do interesting stuff. In fact, you have the async operation table, which is very annoying because that generally grows with stuff and you need to prune it. But it's there. It, it's not particularly great, right? In fact, it's really not particularly great at all. You only get 30 days worth of this that you can see. You can download table usage and such, but it's only 30 days. So then you go, right, OK, center of excellence. I love talking about center of excellence and center of enablements. And they go, OK, we've installed the toolkit. I say, great. And they say, what can we do with it? I say, well, you've got your list of environments. It brings you back all the list of environments you've got in place there. And they say, great, so we go take a look at the environments. Mm. I don't mind the GUIDs being shown on this being the recording. I'm really not too worried. Uh, so it's great governance. Hmm. Can't see anything yet about capacity. Capacity and add-ons, yes! Hold on, percent used, approved, right? We can go in and we can start setting, you know, approval records for it. We can show add-ons if we bought additional capacity. Right, we, we can start setting, you know, how much percent do we want to be used that's approved capacity usage. Now, what you say here about approved capacity usage doesn't actually stop you shoving in data. But you can do a little bit here, but it doesn't actually show you what you're actually looking for, which is how can I see my data usage over time? Now, there is no way to get this out the box with the native tools that Microsoft has. But there is a bit of play around on the API layer, which is what I took a look at. And I have built a solution, which incidentally I am going to upload to the PMP, though I do have a GitHub repository. I'm covered on all fronts on that. And I built something which I call environment capacity tracking. And what this does is you've got your list of environments again. And then you have your, I've got a table called capacity tracking. And what this does on a daily basis behind the scenes with some funky little code in unbound actions, it goes and it takes a look at all the environments being returned and it takes a look and it passes it out in terms of database capacity, file capacity in both, and I've done this in both megabytes and gigabytes, just because people like both of those, file capacity and log capacity. If it's Dataverse for Teams, that was the little wrinkle, which gave me errors at the beginning. It doesn't have a log capacity, so it errored out when it was trying to pass that, so it had to put in some exception handling. And then if we go and take a look at environments, we now have this capacity tracking, which will show me the figures over time. This runs on a, on a daily basis and will return us so again if you've migrated three gigabytes or 300 gigabytes worth of data in, it's not going to refresh until it manages to get stuff through the API behind the scenes. And then they go, great, what can we do with the data? And I go, well, we've got out the box dashboards. So I've got a weekly dashboard, which shows lots of data. Now I actually have filtered this to a specific environment just for the purpose of this, but this can show across all your environments, the amount of data because it is captured per environment. So you can report on that. So you can see on a weekly basis and see wonderful trends historically and a monthly basis. So you've now got a history of what you can have in place and they go, OK, so we've addressed the what do we have now with actual data that's showing rather than in PPAC, which doesn't show properly. We've addressed the, what did we do previously? What did we have historically in terms of the amount of data so that we can say, for instance, this is why we needed this much capacity and we can prove it. How do we do this going forward? Assuming we're just gonna keep loading data into Dataverse. And for this, I turn to Power BI. Now I'm not a Power BI person and I wanna publicly call out Laura Graham Brown, who's a absolute guru in everything data, Power BI and Fabric, and who has very patiently helped me through trying to get this in place. Now, this does not look sexy. It does not look fun. I am not a graphics UI UX designer, unlike a lot of other people on the call. But what this does, 
And if I manage to zoom in, again, this is filtered to just that environment I was showing. It uses the AI capabilities for projection based on historical data. Now, obviously, you need to get the data in place. Um, the actual sample I'm running it on is small because I realized that actually my power automate flow turned itself off for about three months and it needs data on a regular interval to be able to project. But it gives you these lovely lines which says basically if you're going to continue, you are going to have in 20 days five gigabytes, five and a half gigabytes worth of data. Uh, so sorry, this one is the file one. I meant to switch the layout of this around, but attachments, assuming you're storing attachments there. And then with a high, you know, upper bound and low bound. Obviously, this is projection. The reality, if again somebody is wonderful enough to go and start shoving in lots and lots of data or turns on an integration and starts doing that, the projections will be out. But this can help customers go and start projecting what they will have. Ideally, you're going to want this over several months, if not at least six to 12 months. But it will start seeing if you start loading data in and then at some point you archive and then you load data in and then you archive. It does actually, the projection, which I've play, been playing around with, does actually work to a point with this to show how that pattern in the trend over time can work. Now, there is already a version of this solution on GitHub, uh, which is up there, which I will go and this is the GitHub URL. I'm going to be uploading it to PMP as well. Uh, there is a version two coming, which now has the Power BI dashboard plus some tidying up of the Power Automate flow to make it more optimal. As well, the solution that's currently there relies on the Center of Excellence starter toolkit being deployed because it sits on the top of that. This new version will actually be two versions. The first one will be a COE version with the upgraded capabilities. The second one will be native Power Platform if you do not have the COE toolkit deployed. So that's going to be the V2 because not everybody has the starter toolkit. Uh, it does require the Power Platform admin connectors in the background to pull things uh, through the API. But I found it very helpful for clients. I'm allowed by the partners that I work in to mention it to clients because it's something that's nice, it's free, and it enables them to be able to understand and start reporting on it over time.